Stephen Moore from uh, the, the founder of the Ukrainian Freedom Movement. Now, we were, were talking initially about uh, these demonstrations, uh, which uh, the, the, uh, were certainly on a bigger scale than anybody else had expected. Uh, is this, as I was asking you before, is it the Hungarian Maidan? Yeah, and, and that is a great question. And what I would tell you is that um, the thing to notice about these protests is that the colors are red and green, the colors of Hungary. They're not blue. They're not EU. And so what you're seeing is a protest that's coming from Orban's base. And uh, so I think this is uh, the first time that there's been uh, a significant resistance to Orban that comes from his base. So uh, this is a problem for Orban, and it's not getting any better for him. There's increasing numbers of people joining these protests. It's showing up in the public opinion polls as Orban's um, party has dropped several points. They're way below 50 percent at this point. And, um, and I think you know, that there's blood in the water. Blood in the water. Now, um, Mr. Modjar um, has become a little bit of a whistleblower over the past few months, um, re uh, releasing uh, recordings of his wife, who was also a justice minister, uh, talking about uh, various scandals uh, that took place in the... Uh, the uh, in, in the Orban government and particularly about uh, corruption. Now, um, Mr. Orban is pretty good at uh, getting his finger on the pulse of public opinion. And, uh, and, and also, I mean, this is not the first time that there's been allegations of corruption against Mr. Orban. What has gone wrong this time? Well, uh, first of all, you know, when uh, Major is, is recording his wife, you got to think these divorces are pretty nasty. That is among the nastiest divorces I've ever heard. <laughs> um, but, yeah, right? <laughs> and uh, so, um, what? So what I'm seeing is that uh, uh, that uh, this is, you know, before I founded the Ukraine Freedom Project, I did campaigns in several different countries, half a dozen different countries. And one of the worst things you can do to your opponent, one of the most devastating things you can do to an opponent is make them into a hypocrite, and particularly a hypocrite about family values. And uh, Orban's made his platform on family values. He comes to the United States and talks to conservative Americans about family values. And then it turns out, the president of his party has pardoned a, a, a child molester, a multiple child molester. And so um, that is a big thing to take. And, uh, you know, as we know, on his foreign policy, you had this story about Iran just a few minutes ago, you know, Orban has supported Iran's nuclear program. He supports the Obama-era Iran nuclear deal. He sent scientists, uh, nuclear scientists, to Iran. You know, he just had a trade agreement with Iran. The rest of the world is sanctioning Iran. Orban is creating a trade agreement with Iran. So this is the sort of hypocrisy that has come naturally to Orban at this point after 14 years in government. And, it, and it's making an impact on his domestic politics as well. Okay, okay. So, um, bearing in mind that you have worked with, uh, with, with various campaigns, not just in, uh, not just in Ukraine, um, were you to be advising Mr. Modjar um, at the moment, um, what should his next move be? You know, just keep what you're doing what you're doing. It's working. You know, expose the hypocrisy. People, uh, you know, people everywhere are tired of corruption. That is a great issue. So, um, you know, and, and the unfortunate thing uh, for, for Madger is that there's not a meaningful election soon. You know, the parliamentary elections are a, a fair bit off. But if he can get a toehold in the European Parliament, that gives him a platform uh, uh, to continue to point out Orban's inadequacies. So, um, so this is, you know, he should just keep doing what he's doing. He should uh, keep on message 
and keep Orban off balance and and work to get a few seats in the uh, European Parliament. Now, um, Mr. Orban um, has also been a master um, of uh, playing his cards right in Europe. That's that's. I mean, no nobody does it better the, than uh, than Mr. Mr. Orban. He speaks very good English. He you know he went to Cambridge. He 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 can get round these guys. Um, even although, of course, he is uh, many in many ways seen as a as a pariah. He often gets his way. Will he not have a message now going into uh, the 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 uh, elections? And uh, will he not be trying to discredit uh, his uh, his opponent? As you said, he had a bit of a bad divorce. Maybe there are some <laughs> other skeletons. Yeah, it could be a case of of Major is uh, you know the right message, the wrong messenger. Um, but you know, look in 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 my country, in the United States, we have you know Donald Trump has been very good at saying the message that attracts people to him, but he's a deeply flawed messenger. So, uh, you know, this is an era now when, you know, it used to be you had to have like a lot of character. You had to, you know, you had to serve in the military in the United States. That was always a big thing. You had a, the commander in chief had to be in the military and, uh, you know, character counted. Now we're in an era where character counts less, unfortunately. Now that could be, uh, you know, I think that could be a savior for Mino. You know, and at least when you look at him, the relative sins between him and Orban, you know, there's there's pardoning a child molester, and then there's you know doing kind of nasty things in a divorce that you know divorces are nasty themselves. Well, um, that's a, a fascinating um, run into the the Euro elections. Uh, grateful for uh, your, uh, your your viewpoints there, Stephen Moore. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, we're carrying on with elections here in Poland. David, great to see you. Thank you.